So one of the questions that we get all the time here is, should I invest in a coin-op laundry? Coin-op laundries can be a really good investment. They have a very high success rate, and there's lots of ways to make additional cash with them. So the question is, is it for you? That's what we're going to find out in this segment. I'm going to go through and talk about some of the different ways that you can do additional money earning, like with vending machines and things like that, and the success rate and the return on investment. And we're going to see if this might be something for you. Stay tuned. So a lot of people uh, that I talk to ask, should I invest in a laundromat? As a matter of fact, how to buy a laundromat, how to invest in a laundromat, what kind of businesses don't fail, those are all a lot of searches that people are putting in that want to find out what's up with laundromats. So I figured, let's do a deep dive on laundromats and see how good are these things? And um, I mean, I, I hear a lot of people say, well, you can't fail with a laundromat. There's a 95% success rate. I don't know what success rate means. Um, so let's kind of dig into that. And um, is it something that's worth your time? Is it a passive business? Um, a lot of businesses that people say are passive aren't really because you have to find people to run them. And then like, if you assume that you hire a couple of employees and things are just gonna run perfectly, that's probably not gonna happen, right? You're gonna have to come in and find new employees. Some of your employees are gonna steal from you. Some of them are gonna go. Some of them you're gonna have to fire. It just never seems to work out that things like that are passive. But let's take some a basic look at some of the data around laundromats. The first thing is they have a 95% success rate. Well, that's true. We don't know really how they define that. I think it's just how many of them stay in business versus go out of business. And a lot of this data comes from people that are in the business of selling laundromats. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, this is some data from a company called Martin Ray, which is in that business as well. Um, there's about 35,000 laundromats in the United States. This is coin ops uh, and, um, and other things that do your laundry for you. They generate about $5 billion in combined nationwide income. They say that um, market value in terms of what these things would be worth to buy or to sell um, range from anywhere about $50,000 on the low end to over a million dollars on the high end. Um, they generate cash flow somewhere between 15,000 and 300,000 a year. So like if you're looking for something that can build and become worth billions of dollars, laundromats might not be your thing. You could always try to do a roll up in laundromats where you buy more than one and you have a whole bunch of them together. But um, generally these are considered relatively small businesses. Um, some other things to think about, the average uh, ROI. So the average return on the investment you make in a laundromat is gonna be somewhere between 20 and 35%. Now, if you can earn 20 to 35% on your money, that's pretty daggone good, right? And from a compound interest standpoint, that's fantastic. The thing is, is that you can't typically compound the money that you get from a laundromat because you're gonna cap out at however many machines you have times the income that it can make. So it can generate good return on the money you've got, but you know, unless you're planning on owning hundreds and hundreds of them, which not a lot of people have done successfully, then it's a business that generally is going to be smaller. So nothing wrong with that, just probably Probably not going to make you Jeff Bezos, Zuckerberg, or Elon Musk. Um, the average laundromat facility. So uh, they grew up range in size from about 1,000 to 5,000. Um, the average is 2,170 square feet. So you don't need a ton of space for this. Some are owned. The real estate is owned. Most, um, I think, are leased. So that's something that you're going to be thinking about signing leases and qualifying for them and things like that. Um, they're typically open pretty long hours from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Some of them have a 24-hour uh, model. 70% of those laundromats have two employees or fewer. So that's kind of nice to know that you won't have to have a lot of employees, but you're going to have employees. And remember, employees equal pain in the butt. Sometimes, sometimes pain in the butt, sometimes great. Okay. But definitely some management going on, or you hire a manager to manage them. That's also known as an employee. Um, there aren't any major laundromat chains or franchises that we've been able to identify. I'm sure there are some out there, by the way. Um, and 36% of the people that own laundromats consider this ownership of this kind of store, this laundromat store, a part-time job. The remaining 64%, uh, they consider that a full-time job. So that kind of goes to our passive uh, investment philosophy as well. Most of the people that own laundromats, about two thirds of them, they have it as a full-time job, okay? Um, and the others basically consider it a part-time job. So I don't see any room there. Actually in the data, it's 63 and 36%. So I guess 1% of the people might consider it passive um, and they're probably not yet having to replace their employees. Um, startup cost ranges for these things. You're going to invest typically between $100,000 and $300,000 to have one. So 
some capital that's going to be needed. You can certainly borrow most of that. You don't need to come out of pocket with a lot of it or any of it, depending on how you're approaching it. And um, in terms of size, most of these things, they've got between 40 and 100 washers and dryers. So this equipment, by the way, in terms of how long you're going to get to use it before you have to replace it, they say on average it's going to last about 10 to 15 years. So we would typically build in some depreciation when we're kind of scheduling out all of our numbers and say, we're going to have to replace this stuff every 10 to 15 years. So if we pay paid $5,000 for a machine, then roughly $500 a year, that's going to be written off as depreciation. So if we had 10 machines, that'd be 500 times 10, 5,000 a year. Uh, let's see, in terms of the people that you're going to be dealing with. So this is something that I think is really important too, is like, who are my customers and am I excited about these customers? Do I want to have these customers? Well, uh, most of them are low income renters and um, they're the primary users of these coin operated laundries. About 60% of the patrons are women. 87% uh, of the customers live within a mile, so you're generally looking for a population dense area to put a laundromat in when you're kind of doing your due diligence there. Um, the median income is very low, and you can do some research around the neighborhoods that you're looking at putting laundromats in. So you want basically dense population within one mile of the location you're looking at, and their average household income is gonna be about $28,000 a year. So you can use demographic information to say, is this the market, is this laundromat location I'm looking at buying or starting, don't start it, buy it, um, is it a good place to put this because it has a lot of women that are earning $28,000 a year or less in the household income that are living within a mile of the location you're thinking about. Easy breezy, right? 90%, uh, by the way, of these patrons become repeat customers. So that's kind of good. Once you get them, you're going to keep them a lot. In terms of what you're going to pay somebody in San Diego, I looked it up as of today. Um, those are paying those jobs for those two employees or more that you need on average. Uh, they're going to be paid about $26,236 a year. Um, so that gives you an idea that works out to about $12.61 an hour. Um, does that meet the minimum hourly wage within your state? That's something you're going to have to check. Uh, so they're making about $504 a week or $2,186 a month. That's coming from ZipRecruiter, by the way, that data. Um, the average laundromat, how much do they make? They make between $450 and $500 a day. So this includes the washer dryer revenue, but also secondary income such as ATMs, vending machines, and that sort of thing. So you can do other things besides wash and dry, but washing and drying income is the most income. So um, you're talking about between $100 and $1,500 a day is the range, but the average is 450 to 500. Hope that makes sense. Range versus average, right? Averages across all things, the range, some are going to be as low as 100, some are going to be as high as 1500. Um, as far as looking at these types of investments, one of the first things that you're going to want to look at are what do the KPIs look like? What's a KPI? KPI is a key performance indicator. So the key performance indicator, the big thing that we're going to be looking at is something called turns per day. So turns per day is how many times am I going to get someone to use my washer or my dryer in the laundromat? So the more turns, the better. Um, but that's what's going to really determine how we're making money, right? When somebody uses a washing machine to wash their clothes, then that's a turn. So when we talk about turns per day, we're calculating the average number of times each day that each washing machine gets used every day. So first thing we're gonna have to do is um, gather some information. Um, the thing about these machines is that they come in different sizes. So there are lots of different sizes. So we're going to make a list when we're looking at a machine, like if you're walking into a laundromat, it's not listed for sale, but you're thinking, I just kind of like to get an idea for what is this, what is the potential here? What is this laundromat likely making? Well, that's pretty easy. Then we're just going to simply look at how many different size machines there are. And then we're going to say, what is the vend or the price to run the machine? Once you have that, the rest of the math is pretty simple. We're going to multiply the number of machines of each type of machine by this vend price, how much it takes to use it. Um, and then that's the amount that that set of machines is making every single day. So we're going to do this for every set of machines. So if we had six 40 pound washers and it was $4 vend, how much it costs to use it. And we know that each turn was worth six machines times $4 vend equals $24 per turn. Okay, and then we're gonna say, um, we're gonna add up the size of, we're gonna add up the totals of each of those sizes of washers and um, 
and then see how many turns per day it's doing. Now, we don't know how many turns per day it's doing because we've just walked in. We do know, though, how many washing machines they have, how many different sizes there are, and what is the vend price for using each of those. So this is something you can calculate in any laundromat that you walk into. When you walk into there, you can do all of this, and then we're gonna say, okay, we don't know how many turns they're doing unless we talk to somebody. So we could talk to one of those average of two employees and say, hey, how many turns would you? How are you doing a day? Maybe they know, maybe they don't. If they don't, then we can use the average number for the industry, which is three. So we'll assume that there are three turns per day for all of the washing machines that are in the uh, facility, right? All the washing machines, all the dryers. So um, that is the average, by the way. So um, that gives us something like a rule of thumb that we can that we can work with. The other thing is that different size machines tend to do different numbers of turns in different locations. So if you can find that information out from the employee or from a prospectus or pro forma statement that a laundromat that's for sale has, that's cool. If you can't, then you can again use the number three, right? Okay, so um, dryer revenue. Dryer revenue is typically just half of whatever washer machine revenue is. So if we've guesstimated that there are three turns times the vend price times the number of washing machines of the different sizes, then we divide that by two. That's probably our dryer income. We add those two together and we have the kind of rough estimate as what is the income in this place look like. Now, if they're doing fewer than three turns, that's good news for you because they're not fully maximizing or optimizing the number of turns they've got. There's upside potential. That's something that might be the case. It might be upside potential. It's certainly potential. Whether it's probable is going to be subject to how many people are in the area. So we go back to that first due diligence that we're going to do, which is how many households average $28,000 of income or less, preferably have women in them uh, within a mile of the laundromat. Uh, if we're only capturing a small portion of those people, then great opportunity to increase capacity. Um, so to get the total revenue here, we're adding the washer and dryer revenue, and then we're gonna also say, maybe there's some other stuff there. Now, if there's nothing like, there's no vending machines, there's no ATM machines, nothing like that, then there's some potential income there. That's usually pretty small as, um, you know, in comparison to the whole of revenue. So I wouldn't, I, I mean, it's kind of like bonus money if it's not there, because that's something that you'll be able to add to add additional profitability. Uh, in terms of profit margin, we're talking about an ROI of about 20 to 35% on people's investment in these things. So um, we're looking at 20 to 35% um, on a return on the investment that you make in one of these. And I'll do some calculations in a minute. I'll also uh, run through a few actual listings for laundromats so that we can see kind of how this works. So you're pretty much guaranteed success in this business with a profit between 20 and 35%. Um, that means that for every thousand dollars that you invest, you'll get between 200 and 350 dollars as profit. Um, that's really, that's way better than lots of industries. I think that we're looking at around 25 percent for Buffett, uh, and he's done pretty well over his lifetime. Challenge again is scale, because having a lot of these things could get to be, you know, could get to be pretty tough, right? Um, it also explains why these businesses um, generate a lot of cash flow, right? They're typically generating on average on the low end $15,000 per year and on the high end $300,000 in cash flow. And of course, there's some lower, some higher. Um, and then there's that 5% that fail. How did they do that, right? Um, there's a few ways of pushing the income higher. Uh, one of the best is that you can adopt a 24-hour model. So maybe the laundromat right now is only working the average of open at I think it was open at 6 a.m., close at 11 p.m., and you move from that model to a 24-hour model. Now, maybe you get liability because there's it's in a difficult area of town and people mess things up and bad things happen at night. Um, so that's something you want to think about, damaged machines and stuff like that. But that is a potential way to make additional money. And, um, and if you can, then that means a whole lot more money for you, right? Uh, the other thing you could do is you could go to 24 hours just on weekends and then 12 hours on, um, on weekdays. So lots of options there. But the big thing that we're doing when we're looking at these things is saying, number one, we know that generally they're pretty profitable. Is the current thing that we're looking at, once we get the real numbers, is the current laundromat underperforming to industry standards? And if it's underperforming, is it underperforming because it's just undermanaged 
and under-optimized, or is it underperforming because it's in a bad area of town, meaning that maybe it's like, and in this case, it's kind of uh, counterintuitive. The bad area of town might be that it's gentrified, and now people have more money, so they have their own washers and dryers, and the average income is over 28,000, and it's families, and um, and they are spread out because density maybe has, uh, has decreased, and so there aren't as many people within that one mile radius. So we wanna think about those things. Um, if all of those factors are still present, and it's under-optimized, then that means there's probably a good chance for you to come in and raise prices, and add additional machines and move to a 24 hour model, even if it's just on weekends to expand hours. Uh, maybe you can increase automation, decrease employees, um, and uh, maybe you can add vending. So there's a lot of things that you could do that you might be able to do to enhance these things. So um, keep in mind, it's it's really, the average, as I mentioned, two employees, it's not super heavy on human resources, so that's kind of nice. Um, and that's also good news for your profit margin as well. So we'll talk about um, some specific examples here, and um, I'm gonna cut to some listings, and we'll take a look at a few actual laundromats that are for sale, do a little bit of analysis and see does this thing make sense or does it not? Okay, so I am in biz buy sell now. So I have taken the liberty of saying that I'm gonna look in San Diego. So you can see I've got a filter there of San Diego. Uh, industry, I have uh, put laundromat, laundromat, and even spelled it almost right. Let's try it again, L-A-U-N. Oh. Hey, there we go, laundromats and coin operated laundries, and you can see there are, I'm gonna do um, asset sales, established businesses, and real estate, so I've got all of those things. I don't really care about any other filters. You can see there's two that came up immediately. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one is a coin card laundry on a densely populated area in San Diego. So um, these pictures, by the way, are never the place that you are looking at. They're always a, um, a stock photo because the actual place doesn't want the location to be revealed, okay, uh, to competitors or or other people. You can see here that there's a sale pending, so this one is actually in escrow right now, and you can see that uh, this is an asking price of three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. It's got cash flow of seventy-eight thousand uh, dollars. It's been established since two thousand eight, uh, so it has been around for a good while, and its gross revenue you can see is three hundred sixty thousand dollars. So let's see, uh, it's in a densely populated, so that's a good thing for us. We know it needs to be densely populated in San Diego City. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, loads, of, high loads of fluff and fold, walk-in self-service. Uh, it takes both coins and credit cards. So that's good because if it doesn't take credit cards, that is an additional option for you. Now you do have potential credit card fraud, so that's something to be worried about as well. Um, it does have a point of sale system to handle fluff and fold. It says that it's about 2,350 square feet, so that's within the average that we've got. They also have parking spaces in the rear, so parking might or might not be important. Um, I think it kind of is, though, because you're going to get people from a wider area if there's a place for them to park as opposed to just primarily walk-ins. So really looking at getting the full benefit of that mile or maybe a slightly more than mile radius uh, you're going to get more of it with parking than without, so I like that. And they tell you that it's going to cost about $5,200 uh, per month of rent, including taxes. Um, and this one is in San Diego. They've got five employees. Oops, I was trying to highlight five. But they've got five employees. Let's see if it'll let me do that. There we go. Um, and now they tell us what the breakdown is. So we know that they've got 42 washers, 32 dryers, three bill changers, uh, a tankless water heater, which is kind of nice, uh, that means it's heating instantly. Those are a little more expensive to buy, but way less expensive to operate. Uh, point of sale and vending machines and some other stuff. So I like uh, that it's got all that stuff. It does say that there are some competitors around, so I'd want to kind of look at that and see how many competitors and how close are they. It says that you can grow and uh, expand by installing the 80-pound washers. Apparently, they don't have any of those right now. Uh, let me highlight that in the right way there. There we go. Uh, there are only willing to support you for up to two weeks or 20 hours. Now, that's probably because that there are five employees. I'd be interested in knowing, is 
the seller one of the five or are there more than one sellers and are they part of the five employees? So are we going to need to have more employees uh, once these people sell the business to us? And then let's look at listing statistics. Uh, nothing really there. So that's about that for that one. Okay, so what I would typically do in analyzing this, if I move over to my analysis, is I'd say, okay, they're asking $375,000. So $375,000 ask. And if I divide that by the $78,000 in profit, my little symbol there is profit. Um, but if they, if we divide 375 by 78,000, that tells us what our payback is. So it's going to take us about 4.8 years to get our money back. Now that's longer than I would typically like. I'd like typically to have my money back in about a year, but, um, considering that it is, uh, you know, it is within a five-year period. I think that's generally okay. Let's see how the numbers kind of shake out as we dig down a little bit deeper. So that $78,000 in profit, that uh, we're going to divide by the $360,000 in revenue. That's going to tell us what our operating margin is roughly. Now, keep in mind, they gave us cash flow. They did not give us uh, profit. So I want to know, is there a difference between cash flow and profit? So that's something I'm going to be thinking about. Um, but if I divide the 78,000 in cash flow by the $360,000 in revenue, that's going to tell me that my operating margin is about 21.7%. Um, so if the operating margin is between say 20 and 35% in most laundromats, then I'd say we're on the low side of operating margin. That means there should be some ability to optimize and increase our ROI. So maybe there are opportunities to do that. Now, I don't want to buy it based on an assumption that that's going to happen, right? I want to buy it based on the numbers that actually exist today. But I do want to know, is there potential upside? And so that's something that I'm kind of interested if, that, if it's below industry average, because it's probably something to do with management. Hopefully it's not an endemic-ish issue to the neighborhood, like the it's in the process of changing to a less favorable for laundromat demographic, okay? So we're gonna keep in mind that demographic, that $28,000 income, one mile, with people within one mile customer on average, most people repeating 90%, uh, mostly populated by women. We want we want to know that, uh, that the area that we're in is hopefully stable with those demographics or trending more towards those demographics instead of away. Okay. So then the next thing I'm going to know, I know I've got 4.8 years to pay back. I know I've got a 21.7% operating margin. And then I'm going to say, what is my down payment? So if I look at, I'm going to move over here and I'm going to go to, um, let's see, I'm going to go to, uh, da, 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 da. SBA loan. There we go. So I'm going to look at SBA loan rates and I'm going to say, what am I going to be paying on an SBA loan? Well, on average, I'm going to be paying right now, as I look this one up, somewhere around uh, for more than $50,000 down at the bottom, you can see that I'm going to be paying about 9.75%. So 9.75% is going to be my interest rate. And um, I'm going to do that over about seven years. You can see this is a seven up at the top where it says SBA loan size. You can see that it says that this is for a SBA 7A loan that's going to be paid off within about seven years. Okay. So, uh, excuse me that I, I'm going to do the, actually the smaller one. Let's just do the, this one. Let's say that it's going to be paid off in under seven years because that's a better rate. That's 9.25. And let's see if we can pay this thing off within that period of time. So um, I'm going to have to come up with 10% down. So basically I'm going to go back here. I'm going to say my down payment on a $375,000 purchase price is 10%. 10% of 375,000, that's 37,500 right there. And um, that's my down payment. Then I'm going to finance the difference. That's going to be the purchase price of 375 minus the 37.5 down payment. I'm going to be financing $337,500. Um, I just saw that the interest rate is 9.25% today, even after a bunch of hikes by the Fed. Uh, and I'm going to be doing this over seven years so I can get the lower rate, right? Because it's about a half point lower interest on that. So can we do this? Okay, well, if I put this into a mortgage loan calculator, 
the magic number that comes back is a payment monthly on this 337,500. Now keep in mind, I gotta come up with 37,500 cash. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but that means $5,472 per month is what my payment is going to be. $5,472 a month and times 12 is gonna give me my annual, my annual payment to own this thing is going to be $65,675.76. Can I afford that out of current cash flow? So the next thing I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna say, what's my current cash flow? Well, my current cash flow, it told us in the listing was $78,000. And my financing payments for a year are gonna be 65,675, 76. That means I'm going to generate a cash on cash return, meaning that I'm gonna get back all of the cash that it costs me to own this from an interest standpoint, plus $12,000. $324.24. Now that $12,324 is going to be the return that I get on my $37,500. So the next thing that I'm going to calculate is I'm going to say, wait a minute, I've got uh, $37,500 in this because remember we borrowed the balance and we're paying that loan off over 4.8 years at, um, at this $65,000 a year rate, which is paid for by the business. And then on top of that, we've got $12,324. So what is the return that I'm getting on my 37.5? To get that, we're going to circle this and we're gonna move it down here. Oops, not quite so far. And we're going to say we've got a return of $12,000. $324.24. This is cash, uh, and that's cash ROI, uh, divided by our investment of $37,500. And so if I pull out my trusty calculator and say, what does that look like? 12, 24, divided by 37,500 means that I'm gonna get about a 33% return. So that's gonna be a 33% return on my actual investment, right? And my actual investment in this case was 12,324. I'm gonna get that back. So on that investment, I'm going to basically have a payback that's a little faster. To calculate my payback period on my actual investment here, I'm gonna say I've got 37,500 that I invested in it and I'm getting back 12,324.24 ROI. That means that I have a return on my investment, time to return my investment, by the way, 37,500 divided by 12,324.24. I'm gonna get my money back in 3.37 years, we'll call it 3.4. So that's a 3.4 year return of capital. So do I wanna invest in this or not? I mean, it's a fine investment. It's a 33% return on my money. I'm gonna get my initial capital back in 3.4 years, so I could also potentially borrow that money from a private lender uh, in some way that would increase if I had to pay interest on that. Maybe I would get that money back in five years as well, but I'd be zero out of pocket in that case. Um, so would I do this deal? Would you, should you do this deal? I guess it just depends on what are the opportunities that you've got. Um, if you can take 37,500 and make more than, um, $12,000 a year on it, then I would do the other thing. Um, this doesn't scale terribly well. As I mentioned, you're going to have to buy several of these things to get up to any kind of real money. But at the end of the day, if you look five years in the future and you say, I've bought, 10 of these things and you're making $780,000 a year, well, that's not a bad place to be, right? So taking a look at the laundry thing overall, it's an okay investment. It definitely has a very, very low failure rate in terms of going out of business. It has a general good return range. Your biggest challenge is gonna be coming up with the cash. You're gonna to need to have some kind of good credit to get into this business to start with. Um, 
you may be able to find somebody that would be willing to sell you one of these for zero out of pocket. That would mean seller financing as opposed to bank financing. Um, that's definitely possible. It's just going to mean kind of going out and finding some that aren't for sale. So we talked about first, you know, what are the demographics of the industry? Is this something good? Um, it looks like the answer is yes. Uh, biggest challenge to me, hard to scale to be big, big money, right? Um, but nice for an investment and nice certainly to have kind of on the side. Is it truly passive? Probably not. Uh, most of the people consider it a part-time or full-time job. Is it something that is a good investment generally, assuming that you've got the cash and credit or can put it together to get into it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the average returns 20 to 35%. That's, that's pretty good. And with the average being between $15,000 and $300,000 a year, every fifteen dollars to $300,000 a year helps. I've always said that. The question is, will it stop you from doing something bigger? Is it big enough for you? Um, is it something that will help you meet your overall goals? That's something that you'll have to answer. But that's kind of what it looks like to invest in laundromats. So to me, laundromats overall, they get a thumbs up and um, something that uh, you just want to run through your filter of, will it generate the cash that you want at the scale you want within the time you want? Right.